This is CBC Here and Now. Good evening and welcome to Here and Now. I'm Anthony Germain. Well, for months now, at times, it's felt as if this province is being run by three people. Another sign things are getting back to normal? Politicians back at work today. That's right, Anthony. The House of Assembly has reopened, but with plenty of changes. The MHAs filed into the legislature today for the first sitting of all members together since before the pandemic. The House did sit twice during the COVID-19 crisis, but with a smaller number of MHAs. Members returned to a different looking legislature. Desks have been separated to facilitate physical distancing, and some MHAs have even been moved moved to the speaker's gallery. The public gallery is closed and another safety measure. As you can see, members can no longer stand to speak. They must remain seated. House Speaker Scott Reed says health guidelines also encourage MHAs to refrain from shouting or singing. Yes, singing while in the chamber. So droplets aren't scattered in the air. MHAs are also required to wear masks, but only when they're walking around. And Anthony, you were all also at the legislature today where some major issues need to be addressed, both the province's health crisis and its economic crisis. Well, certainly, Carol, with so much focus on the health department over the last three months of COVID-19, I think we're feeling a shift in public policy that really has to do with life during the end of COVID, after COVID, whatever's going to come next. And the big question really is about where is the economy headed? How much trouble are we in? And today, one of the major questions in the House was about where we are going to get help. Will Ottawa be there when we need it? Here's Premier Ball. The situation is very serious. And, and when I say that, I base it on, you know, the, where we are with our GDP and the debt that we have. Our debt to GDP ratio is, is much higher than any other province right now. We're seeing province, I think, provinces that are receiving equalization that are posting large surpluses. So that is not what equalization was designed to be. And right now, this, you know, debt to GDP is bothersome. And, you know, we know that if this, uh, if this continues, it's not sustainable. We cannot continue to borrow at the levels that, you know, that we've been borrowing on. We have resources here. We have people here. We have our ability to deal with our situation. We just need a partner. We just need fairness. So this is not a bailout. This is not something that's not happening within other provinces. All we're looking for is fairness. Now, it's interesting because the leader of the opposition, Chess Crosby, is almost in agreement with Premier Ball that uh, somehow uh, the transfer payment system needs to be fixed and, and made more fair for the province of Newfoundland and Labrador. Of course, some critics aren't quite sure whether that's the case or not. It's a very complicated formula. But it was Mr. Crosby who's asking the question today, but can we really count on Ottawa and how long will Justin Trudeau be there for Newfoundland and Labrador to borrow money and, and keep our economy going? He and his own finance minister are basically pleading with the federal government for longer term assistance. He mentions equalization. He mentions uh, fiscal stabilization. He mentions uh, tax credits and investment incentives for the offshore. But none of this is forthcoming yet. It's being talked about, particularly the incentives for the offshore are not coming. I don't think they're going to come. That is a hostile act against this province and its ability to ever get back on its own two feet and become again a contributing member to Confederation. Now to get to the third party, the NDP today, Alison Coffin at one point in the House, uh, Dwight Ball was saying he wasn't looking for a bailout, he was looking for a partnership. She kind of yelled out, tomato, tomato. And uh, Ms. Coffin says she has some serious concerns about uh, where we're headed. Um, and certainly I'm more concerned about the fact that three separate times in almost three months, we've had to go to the, the federal uh, government for money. That's very disconcerting. It, it certainly says that perhaps there's not a very good fiscal management plan in place. I have heard rumors of nationalization of assets. Uh, certainly we have a lot of assets that would be beneficial to the federal government. We have Muskrat Falls, which is generating an enormous amount of energy right now. Maybe the federal government might need royalties. Maybe, maybe you know, there, there are a variety of other things that they might want to consider nationalizing in exchange for an enormous amount of money. 
So the economy dominated certainly, but also healthcare. And in a strange way, everything was delayed by almost two hours because two independent MHAs, Eddie Joyce and Paul Lane, they said that they're not getting a fair chance to raise issues. And they raised the fact that they're getting lots of phone calls from people who are worried about procedures that they couldn't get because of COVID-19. That is an issue that seems almost certain to come up in the House of Assembly. They weren't given what they wanted, a chance to ask questions, but it took two hours to get that handled before business resumed as normal. Carolyn. Thanks so much, Anthony. That's here now is Anthony Germain on Confederation Hill. Well, in other news, the Coast Guard is dealing with an oil spill off the coast of Labrador. The Coast Guard says a surveillance flight yesterday showed about two to 3,000 liters of oil. Another flight today showed about 980 liters left on the water. The Coast Guard has dispatched a ship to the area. The agency is trying to figure out where the oil came from and how to best clean it up. A medical resident at Memorial University is under fire with accusations of racism. A group of undergraduate students wrote to the Dean of Medicine about views expressed by Zachary Keener on social media. Here and now's Ryan Cook reports. Zachary Keener's Twitter page was deleted today, but last week his bio drew the ire of colleagues for one word, Islamophobe. That and other comments made on social media led to this letter from a group of medical students at Munn. They sent it to Dean of Medicine Margaret Steele. Included in the letter are screenshots of conversations Keener had with his colleagues at Munn Med about the Black Lives Matter movement. After some back and forth, Keener made a comment about being a racist, sexist, and ableist. He then challenged people to call Munn in Eastern Health and mocked the idea of sensitivity training. In another comment, he again makes reference to being a racist. We reached out to Keener on Facebook and he denied any allegations of racism. He says that his comments were taken out of context. I offered to let him put those comments in context, but he declined. I also asked him how he could treat Muslim patients and work with Muslim co-workers if he's an Islamophobe. No answer there either. But we did take him up on the challenge of contacting his bosses. Eastern Health declined comment altogether. Margaret Steele sent us a statement, but nowhere in the 200 plus words did she mention the word racism. I asked why, and a spokesperson said it was because she couldn't comment on this specific case, but she could say that the student's letter was not a proper complaint. Steele did condemn racism in a post on MunMed's website, but the spokesperson says that that was unrelated to this letter. We don't know yet if the students have filed a formal complaint or if they will, but Keener says that it's now in the appropriate hands and he won't have any further comment until it's over. Ryan Cook, CBC News, St. John's. A former high-ranking police officer in the province will spend the next nine months on house arrest. Brent Hillier Sr. was sentenced yesterday for breaching the public trust. He violated his duties as an officer to help his son get out of trouble. In 2018, Brent Hillier Sr. was the first officer on scene at a car crash in Upper Island Cove. He found out the driver was his son. And even though he was suspected of impaired driving and crashing into a house, he let him go. Brent Hillier Jr. was allowed to drive away from the scene and was not examined by officers until much later. He eventually got six months house arrest for dangerous driving. His father received a similar sentence yesterday when he owned up to violating his duties as an officer. He also paid the homeowner just over $5,000 for damages caused by the crash. Hillier Sr. retired in January before the RCMP could let him go. Well, tomorrow, MPs will return to the House of Commons to examine a proposal from the Trudeau government on financial support programs for Canadians. One of them is the CERB, which is intended to help those who lost all income because of the pandemic shutdown. The NDP fears the proposal will criminalize people who wrongly applied. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau says those people are not the target. We're not looking at punishing people who made honest mistakes. But unfortunately, in every situation, there are a few criminals uh, who will deliberately try to take advantage. And we've put measures in place that will allow us to go after the deliberate fraudsters who are trying to game the system. 
Now, the terms of the bill are still under discussion with opposition parties, but the draft says applications based on false or misleading information or made by those who knowingly fail to disclose sources of income will be penalized. Offenders could face fines of up to $5,000 plus a penalty of up to twice the amount of income support wrongly claimed. A six-month jail term is also a possibility. Many parts of the economy have collapsed because of the pandemic, but new data from the Liquor Corporation reveals that sales of alcohol actually climbed during the crisis. And as here and now, Terry Roberts reports, private liquor stores deserve most of the credit. This was the scene outside a Liquor Express store in Logie Bay last Friday. Lineups and congestion. I'm here at the Liquor Express and I am lined up with all these people who I think are doing the same thing as I am today. <laughs> Been like this for weeks, a big adjustment for the neighbours. I can't even get handy to the store and I'm literally next door and I can't get handy to her at all. Even just for like eggs or milk. The Liquor Board closed its corporate stores to foot traffic in March. Online and telephone orders only. Restaurants and bars were also forced to shut down. So people flock to places like this for their adult beverages. Oh, it's a nice day. It's not like it's snowing. It's not raining sideways. It's fine. We have 140 of them around the province. Uh, they really were able to pick up the extra volume uh, that we weren't able to do through the stores. Liquor Express stores across the province, privately owned and cashing in. A little excessive. People coming out with cases and cases of alcohol. It's a little excessive, boss. That's this. That's Newfoundland Australia. It's been uh, pretty hectic at times, steady pace. I've seen them here from as far as Carboneer, as far as Clarenville. I'd say it's probably 75% more. People are buying a lot of stuff. Compared to this time last year, booze sales over the last three months are up 11%. Throughout the nine or ten weeks that we've been in this, uh, they've been absolutely critical which means the Liquor Board should be able to return another healthy dividend to our cash-strapped government again this year. About $50 million for the last three months alone. That we will transfer to government for health care programs, for education programs and so on. But with the economy slowly reopening and more options to buy booze, scenes like this won't be as common. Which means Ashley Butler, a nurse on the front lines during the pandemic, won't have to worry about strangers parking in her driveway. Terry Roberts, CBC News, St. John's. Well, speaking of shopping, this is the second day of Alert Level 3 and more stores are reopening. And that was the line at the Winners in Galway on the west end of St. John's. The store limits the number of people allowed in at one time, so shoppers had to line up to get in. These stores have been closed since mid-March, so this is the first opportunity people have had to go shopping here. Well, it's the newest attraction in Grand Falls, Windsor. 16-year-old Emily Hewlett is hoping to satisfy your sweet tooth. And her summer business is on wheels, literally. Here and now's Garrett Berry reports. Talk about a sweet summer job. I really like baking and I've always kind of been into business. We talk about it a lot during and the house and supper and stuff. Meet the head chef and CEO, of sweet tales and treats. When we close at night, we clean everything up and I go home and normally make the berry sauce for the next day. So I'm up till 10, 11 o'clock every night. But running a business at 16, not always easy. I wasn't legally allowed to buy the truck, so it's not in my name, even though it's my business. That's where mom comes in. It's totally her. She's into everything. If I have a meeting at the bank, she comes with me. Grand Falls Windsor's newest attraction Two weeks in, things are going good. It's very impressive to watch her. I'm usually at the back of the trailer um, making our sweet tails and putting on batch after batch of that. And oftentimes I'll kind of look up the trailer at her and be totally amazed that she's handling two or three or four orders at one time. So busy she's even had to hire on a best friend. Her parents said she had to get a summer job and they own their own restaurant and she really didn't want to work there. Don't worry, she has experience. I'm a really bossy person, so my friends are used to it. The menu is set, the taste tests are done. So I have got control over myself and you kind of get sick of it after you eat it throughout the full winter trying to make sure everything's right. Now, 
watch the business sizzle. Uh, it's really nice, and I hope like it shows other kids that live across the island that they can do this too. Gary Perry, CBC News, Grand Falls, Windsor. Another beautiful evening to step outside, this time down at the harbor in St. John's. Now, as we head through the next couple of days, we've got a little bit more wet days ahead, and then things will dry out as we head towards the weekend. Temperatures climbing as well. I'll have all the details coming up. During this COVID-19 pandemic, life is different for you, for me, and for all of us at Here and Now. We're working apart and working from home like so many of you to maintain a distance and keep each other safe. These are historic times. These are changing times. And here's a change we're happy to announce. Starting on Monday, June 15th, Here and Now will return to a 60-minute newscast, a full hour of your stories and the essential information you need the most. Welcome back. 
There is a horrific story from Nova Scotia tonight. Police say a woman was killed by her dog as she was out walking the animal this morning. The dog, described as a large pit bull, ran away after the attack. It was later struck by a motorist and died. Paul Palmeter reports. A string of police cruisers lined the road early this morning in Chaswood. The body of a woman had been discovered in the ditch by a teenage girl who was out for a run. So I look and I see the dog in the ditch. So I'm like, what's the dog doing in the ditch? And I go to step over and the dog like comes at me and I'm telling him to like back down because there's no, like I'm not gonna hurt him. And then I see the woman in the ditch. So at this point I'm trying to like stay calm for the dog so the dog doesn't attack me. The gruesome discovery left Borden shaken. Another woman who was driving by pulled over to help. So I pulled my car over and I got out and looked and she had very extensive injuries and to her and I both it was very obvious that yes yeah, I think she had passed away. At that point we had no idea why or for what reason or what had happened. The dog had run off and Parker and Borden called 911. Police quickly sent out warnings on social media telling people in the area to stay inside. They described the dog as a large pit bull that was on the loose. Later in the morning, as the message was spreading through the community, the dog was intentionally run over by a man on a dirt road not far from where the woman's body was found. I hit it with the van. Really hard. Because I don't know how to explain it. It was just, it was the right thing to do. Um, I was going through my mind, the people that didn't know um, if this dog got a hold of someone else. Because on my way to, to see where the dog was, I had seen some ladies out with their horses. They had no idea about this. Police brought the body of the dog back to the area where the attack occurred. Borden says she saw the victim, believed to be the dog's owner, beside the road prior to the attack. They were perfectly fine. They were just like sitting in the ditch. She was petting the dog and they were just playing around. And then when I come back down, the dog was laying with her in the ditch. Police have yet to identify the woman who they say is from Middle Muscadabit. Paul Palmiter, CBC News, Chasswood. Weather update is brought to you by the sold out HCF Home Lottery. Thank you, Newfoundland and Labrador. Your support has been overwhelming. Prize winners will be announced on June 25th at hcfhomelottery.ca. A little bit of a gray, cool, wet day again today for parts of the east. Sun's trying to peek out now, and uh, it should actually be a fairly nice evening. It took a while to get temperatures to climb, though. Sat around 6 degrees for most of the afternoon. Let's take a look at where we're sitting now. About 8 degrees is the daytime high so far in St. John's, and then we've got uh, the warm spot actually in Burgio at 13 degrees. Nine for Happy Valley Goose Bay and uh, pretty much just single digits everywhere else. And as we head through uh, the next couple of hours, we are looking at the potential for some showers, uh, certainly for the west coast through central. And then hopefully some more sunshine will peak out just before sunset uh, for areas in eastern, um, eastern parts of the island. And as we go through the overnight tonight, we're actually going to see some showers redeveloping again towards the early morning hours, certainly for eastern Newfoundland. And then for the west coast and through parts of the interior, with clear skies, cool temperatures tonight, and light winds is a recipe for frost. So there is a frost advisory, so if you did plant already, you're going to have to cover those uh, plants up tonight. And as we head through the day tomorrow, another cool day for areas in the east. We're looking at rain for most of the afternoon again, pretty much through central and the west coast. A mix of sun and cloud and or sunshine, but the chance of a few afternoon showers uh, certainly can't be ruled out and down through uh, southeastern portions of Labrador as well. Otherwise, those temperatures will actually uh, rebound quite nicely up through the big land. 14 degrees in Happy Valley Goose Bay, 13 in Lab City. You'll see your clouds on the increase through the day and then into the evening and overnight hours we'll see some showers developing for you in lab west for the island again that cool day expected for the east eight degrees should be the afternoon high in st john's otherwise 
We should hit the double digits. Cornerbrook, 14 degrees. Portabasque, 11. And St. Anthony, you're looking at a high near 10 degrees. Into Thursday, a little bit more cloud cover in play, but the temperatures are going to start to climb as well. 14 degrees for St. John's. Areas in the east might see a little bit more sunshine. And then uh, that rain that will move in overnight into the early morning on Thursday will spread across the big land with temperatures sitting in the teens. Unfortunately, for northern areas of Labrador, your temperatures will still be sitting in no single digits. Take a look at the next five days. Once we get Wednesday out of the way, we actually should see things dry out and maybe the chance of a few showers on Saturday for the southern half of the Avalon and the Beeren Peninsula, but overall looking like a pretty solid weekend. Unfortunately, a little gray for you in western areas, uh, but temperatures again in the 20s, uh, certainly for central Newfoundland, although you're looking at uh, generally gray skies uh, through the weekend. For Labrador, a little bit of a roller coaster. You'll be back up into the teens and down to the single digits for Saturday. And then Eastern Labrador, look at that, 23 degrees it looks like for you on Friday. Had to share this great shot from Peggy of the Sun Pillar in Long Point, Twillingate. Thank you so much for sending that photo in. If you have any weather photos to share with us, send them to nlphotos at cbc.ca.
Welcome back to Here and Now. You can now pick up face masks with your drive through fast food order in Alberta. The provincial government has signed a distribution deal with McDonald's, Tim Hortons, and A&W. Can I just get a small coffee with two cream and one sugar and uh, some masks? Hi. Hi there. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's one of our CBC Edmonton colleagues trying it out. You don't have to buy anything to get a free four pack of non-medical masks. The Alberta government is providing 20 million of them to more than 600 fast food outlets. It's also making them available to regions that aren't within 10 kilometers of a fast food drive through There is a limit of one pack per person. And we will leave you tonight with this video. It's of a lost baby moose in Deer Lake looking for its mother. Kendra Berry sent us this video. She says a good Samaritan helps the young moose find its way. You can hear it calling out for its mother there. Then the mother moose appears. She is a big mother for sure and certainly uh, giving everyone a very stern stare. Uh, it turns out the lost baby moose was one of two calves. This video uh, is certainly a warning though to people about uh, getting too close to animals, but very nice uh, to see a happy ending there. That is pretty adorable. And on that note, uh, thank you for spending part of your evening with us. Hope you enjoy this uh, gorgeous night in St. John's. Lots of sunshine to enjoy there, beautiful weather. Hope you can join us again tomorrow. Good night.